lot about it because you've seen it in this tape. We all have pretty good technique here at Westside. We do have seven people who have pulled over eight. Probably a hundred pulled into sevens. Uh, but basically, when you sumo, you'll notice in the tape when we're doing exercises, you drive the feet out to the side, never down. If you push down your knees, it'll become like this. Drive the feet out and pull back. I squat down when you notice when I do it. I pull myself down to the bar, pulling as hard as low as I can, which my, you don't want to get your legs too low because it just makes a terrible position to start from. As long as your back starts, then you start pulling and pushing your feet apart. Same thing in the conventional. You get down, you pull yourself low, pull yourself down, that way you're pulling on the bar, and then you start with you're raising your head slightly up, and then you start pulling and straightening out your knees, hips, and back all at the same time. So, like I said, just watch all the exercises in the tape from the speed pulls to the max effort stuff and the power rack and the box pulls and uh, all those exercises. Now, you notice we did speed pulls. We do speed pulls immediately after speed deadlifts. That occurs on Friday. That's our dynamic day. These are dynamic deadlifts. Uh, Sub-maximum weight with maximal speed. We normally do between 6 and 10. I recommend actually staying low. Uh, we'll come in many times and warm up with reverse hypers and glute ham raises and some abs. Then we'll squat, then we'll do the speed pulls. Then it's back to reverse hypers, some more glute hams and abs, and we go home. Normally coming back and doing a second workout with special exercises. So after, let's think about max every day when the boys pulled out re reverse band pulls or lighting method. After they will come in and warm up with some exercises, not much stretching here before, stretching after you work out. But come in and warm up with some reverse hybrids, glute hams, warm up your glutes, hamstrings, lower back, abs, and maybe some light lats. Vogel pull does a lot of that. Then you move into a max effort day where you actually maybe pull up to a record in the lighting method or you pull a box deadlift for a record. Then when you're done, you select, go right back, do more reverse hybrids, more glute hams, or possibly the good morning machine or the landmine for um, oblique strength. Always do a max effort exercise and then three or maybe four other exercises tops. I prefer to only do a couple. I like to do a lot of a couple things. Lots of reverse hypers, lots of glute hams. I don't count abs, I do so many of them, but I suppose you could count abs. Chuck Vogelpool does an enormous amount of lat work. So that's how you set up a workout. Remember, it would be just like this. If you pulled a band workout, then reverse, uh, work up to a max, it says not on max every day. For us, it occurs on Monday, three days after Friday's workout. Extreme workouts occur every 72 hours. So three days later, we do the max every workout out on Monday. Then after we work out to a max single, and whatever core exercise we do, and it could be a good morning, you notice all the squats. It could be a safety squat bar. Work up to a record safety squat bar, then go to your glute hands, reverse hybrids, um, or good mornings and uh, pull-throughs, or band curls, or exercises like that and always work your abs and your lats on that day. And that pretty much makes a workout. So uh, I hope you understand this. It's pretty simple. I wrote articles about it. 26 week cycle. Matt Smith went from a 633 deadlift in less than four years to 850 by exactly what you've seen in this tape. So um, I hope that concludes everything and thank you.